Hello, I'm Brandon Town, and this is Art in the Digital World. This is a new show where we're going to be interviewing people who have various talents of artistic creations that they tend to kind of maybe use computers in some way. Maybe they use computers directly or they use it to promote their art. So we have an, our guest today who is Valerie Davidson, who I'm very close to. <laughs> and uh, she's a graphic artist. So why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of just the basic idea of what you do and what, a, what your world or what your place is in graphic art. So. OK. Well, actually, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I've been often asked if I'm a graphic artist or a graphic designer. And the, the premise of the topic of this show, Art in the Digital World, is perfect for that because I really tend to do a lot of digital work with my graphic design work. And I'm an artist, so I get to implement a lot of artwork digitally into that design work. Um, as a graphic designer, I pretty much um, fill the bill for any kind of advertising or design work that might go into publications, books, um, as, as well as you know, newsletters, brochures, business cards, designing logo, logos, stuff like that. Great. Now, how did you get into it? Uh, how did you start doing this kind of work? Did you go to school? Or? Well, I did. Actually, I went to school originally to be a photographer. And what happened with that world back in the, um, I would say, early 90s is that it, you know, as well as the technology just kind of boomed, photography, I found, just wasn't going to be enough for me career-wise. So I went back to school and graduated in 96 from Modesto Junior College with my AA degree in graphic design. And still yet, again, with this technology advancing all the time, it's, it just wasn't going to be quite where I wanted to be. So I went back to school for my BS in graphic design at the Art Institute in 2007. In fact, I graduate in two weeks. <laughs> so Good. So uh, you're the second person who's been on the show who has sort of started off doing something kind of artistic and then gone to do something else. How do you feel that your experience as a photographer um, and I'm, I'm assuming that you used film when yes. <laughs> then, um, kind of helped you with uh, your graphic design knowledge in your work. Well, that's that's fascinating question because I, I love to joke around that I roll my own. I used to roll my own film. I'd buy those 100 yards, 100 feet of film and roll my own little canisters, and we did do film. And how we would work that out back then was... Uh, photography would be placed in the design work. It was also traditional, uh, the color separations whenever you went to print. So a lot of my photography would be placed with other people's graphic design work. And of course, in the dark room, that was all separated out and printed out. Uh, it, it really works to have some industry knowledge on photography. But nowadays, it almost seems like it's not a necessity to have that kind of knowledge about photography to be in the graphic arts business. OK. Can you tell us a little bit more detail about what it is to be a graphic, or how, what kind of techniques you use for graphic art? I mean, we talked a little bit photography, mm -hmm. but what do you use? What do you use? A computer? Do you draw? Do you, how do you do it all? All of it. I actually start, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of drawing. And I believe that uh, we, we call it in our industry thumbnails or brainstorming. I know writers call it brainstorming. What I generally will do is when I have a concept that I need to get down on the computer for the final project, it starts on paper. I think it's really important to have some knowledge or background in art to be able to implement what you're trying to uh, convey as a message in the final art piece to have that knowledge of being able to draw. So I draw a lot. I will do a lot of concept thumbnail sketches and from there do up a couple of larger scale drawings with maybe some added color to it. And from there I use, uh, I pretty much work in the industry with the Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign programs. I've, I've used Dreamweaver 
media and web design is not really my thing. So I'm my my favorite program that I use is is the vector based Illustrator program. It's this and and there again. You know, two, three years have gone by and I've upgraded from CS3 to now I'm using CS5 because the industry is so rapid. It's always changing. Now, uh, you and I have had a lot of discussions about the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator <laughs> and I'm, I'm not, a, not very good with Illustrator and, but I understand the idea of the vector graphics. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you could, in your words, describe what it is, what, is, what does a vector graphic mean? What does that mean to use Illustrator as opposed to Photoshop where you're taking a photo and you're kind of working on that photo or if you're just drawing mm -hmm. with a line, what, what's a vector graphic? Well, a vector graphic, graphic is actually a mathematical equation that you can, you can create a line in Illustrator through vector art, size, any size you want, and you don't lose. It's, it's, a, it's a mathematical equation that gathers information as you make it larger or smaller without losing any of the impact of the, the, the smoothness of the line. In Photoshop, for instance, it's, a, it's called a bitmap program, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's based on pixels, small little tiny squares hundreds of thousands of different colors to be able to use on a photo in Photoshop to edit, whereas in Illustrator, we don't have that same capacity, although the colors are becoming more and more wide-ranged. It's, it's incredible what you can actually create in a vector-based program. So a vector really is something, if you want, if I do, if I'm doing a logo design, for instance, and I want smooth lines, that I can use that logo as a one-inch logo or a logo that may be on a billboard. I would create it in, in a vector-based program. Okay. Well, um, I think that we have some examples mm -hmm. for you, and uh, I don't know if you saw, but your one of your photos is, is in the title. I did see that. And it says vector <laughs> graphics. Yeah. And so maybe we could show some of those okay. and talk about um, what they are. And I'm really interested in vector graphics. I think it's a really cool thing. And I know that more and more websites are using it, more and more people are using it as opposed to bitmap pixel-based um, graphics. So um, let's go ahead and uh, play some of these pictures mm -hmm. that you have. Okay. That was the Apple assignments that we had to do. Um, what I did here is the bottom right hand corner red apple is done strictly in a vector based program that I used a lot of paintbrushes on. The paintbrushes are, are incredible abilities to be able to add some texture in a vector based program. I didn't, uh, I didn't, that was more of a simple vector based graphic. The one to the to the left of that, the green apples, if you'll notice the one in the back, it is a little less detailed than the one in the front. If, if you could really see the detail on the front, it's got patterning on it. Because in vector graphics in Illustrator, it allows the opportunity to be able to use textures, which opens up a complete new door in the world of art. The one up above is actually a, a display of a lot of gradients and some texture-based fills, but I really used that one more to display the idea of being able to shear and turn the graphic of the, art, the apples into a shadow behind and be able to shear that and move it without losing any of the uh, integrity of the apple. That's great. Here's the one. Oh, there's my, th this was just absolutely one of my most favorite projects to do. The nice thing about technology and the advancement is that with each year, each program uh, series that comes out, they add a little bit more and a little bit more. There's something in Illustrator called Live Paint and Live Trace. And that picture on the right hand side is of the is the real picture of the giraffe that I used. And on the left-hand side, every single piece of color in that draw, in, in the art on the, on the left-hand side is actually a piece of the graphic. 
it is defined by lines, and each of those lines I can actually fill with a color. Gradients are used in that to give it more realistic uh, 3D viewing, per se. And, it, and I used a lot of brushes. The little hairs on the nose are done with a special brush. And that was just a lot of fun to see how realistic I actually could get that graphic to look like the real picture. So I think it's important for our viewers to know that it's not like you're painting or drawing. You're, you're really just making a bunch of lines and shapes. That's right. With gradients. That's right. And you, you know, someone who is an artist with it can really make something that's definable with it. But Yes, and, and with this one here, it was a, a double-page double ad, magazine ad. And what I really enjoyed about this was the idea that I could make and create a paintbrush and use what's called a gradient mesh tool. And that is the little flow of stars that you get back in the background. And it's so, it's so easy to get something that almost forms a realistic view through the form of vector art and the programs that are available to use. This is, this is one of my favorites that you've done. I think you have a really wonderful style in it. Maybe tell me a little bit about how you kind of came up with that style or right. what influenced you to do this. Well, this was a fun project too. In fact, actually this you may see all around town right now because the show for the dance is going to come up in two weeks. What I did here is uh, strictly using vector pen tool and drawing first, well first let me start, let me get back to the beginning. When I met with the client and found out that it was a modern dance and ballet, that's when the first concept actually starts taking place. The idea comes into my head, I saw the vision, and then I asked the client for color uh, matches, what, what, the, what the actual costume colors were going to be. I saw this flow, so what I did here was the whole body and outfit is done with individual shapes that are drawn with the pen tool and filled in and then the background ribbons were actually done with a paint brush and the the style of the whole style of it really fit the whole modern ballet and contemporary dance that it's going to be and I really did have to match up this was interesting I took color s samples from her catalog of of costumes and was able to match exact colors with the vector art. And that's what I love about this digital art is that, you know, no longer do we have to guess at the color schemes. And I like the tickets in that one too. They're really, they're really cool. You have the tickets that match the kind of the same style of the poster. Right. Now this one, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the actual drawing is is a is a hand drawn though. That this is. This isn't really a vector. Well, and this is the wonderful part about being able to be an artist and a designer. I painted, that, that painting in the background is actually a watercolor uh, drawn in water and painted, and I was able to scan that photo in, or the, the drawing in, the painting, take it into Photoshop, do some little slight editing to enhance the picture itself, put that into Illustrator, create the outline and the text surrounding that actual mixed media. It, it's what we would consider a mixed media. The, the watercolor is taken into the Illustrator program and then it's digitally formatted to make what it, the, the book cover.